Hello everyone, uh, my name is Monica Gaynor, I'm Head of Corporate Communications at the International Telecommunication Union, the UN Agency for Digital Technology. And uh, today I have a conversation and not an interview <laughs> uh, with uh, Elisaveta Mika. Uh, she is one of the women who broke barriers and whose photo is pictured uh, at the United Nations Palais here in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, actually, this morning we were opening the photo exhibition with 112 photos of women who broke barriers in, uh, in science and technology and uh, digital technology. And that was an exhibition organized by the United Nations office at Geneva, the CERN, uh, which is a few kilometers here from ITU in Geneva, and ITU. And we wanted to show uh, portraits uh, and little bios of women who have broken gender barriers on their way to uh, uh, positions behind and on the scene in digital technology. So uh, we have the honor to have uh, Elisabetta here with us and uh, to tell us a little bit about her career path and the barriers that she saw in her young life. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and so we start first with uh, what's your uh, position today yeah. here uh, mm, yeah, in yeah. Geneva? Indeed. I am a network engineer. I work for uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise for the moment. And uh, in a nutshell, my job is split in between two sides. I call it the front side and the backstage. <laughs> the front side is in front of the audience. Uh, We're having a... Um, 110 uh, racks data center uh, here in uh, Meran, in Geneva. Uh, so customers are coming on in, in our innovation center. So my team and I, we are responsible of setting up the data center and the services, the servers, everything behind the iron, let's say it's simple. On the other hand, though, we need to be in front of the scenes with our customers, because even if uh, our customers are excited by how the data center looks like, they need to understand what's the correct product for their needs. And this is where we are coming in as uh, technical experts to discuss the, their issues and find solutions. So can you tell us about that uh, a little bit? Uh, because in that position, you also, when you advise clients, you have to know what you're talking about. You have right? to. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have to know, so I would have more fun. <laughs> but yes, I do have to know. We do have to know, uh, indeed. So I, I've started my career as a research engineer in a polytechnic institute. I followed up with the a telecommunication or a telecommunications organization. Then I worked for the European Parliament uh, in Brussels. Uh, then I was a consultant in France, in Lyon. So all this uh, background is uh, way more deep uh, technical. Although I have to say, since uh, I joined my current role, I, let's say I was uh, not obliged, but uh, slightly pushed in front of the audience. So I had to speak up my mind. Uh, so I, I had to speak up tech because at the moment I was the iron and I. <laughs> now I am the iron, I, and uh, the customers. So this is what's different. Um, so yes, uh, as I said, I'm a network engineer, although uh, I've studied uh, telecommunications and informatics, and my master's degree is in ubiquitous and pervasive computing. This is my full background. Can you explain the last one again, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is lovely. Um, it is called ubiquitous and pervasive computing. Actually, maybe an easy word to say is that we've had three eras of IT in our lives. The first era was the big mainframe computers that hundreds of people had to take care of them. The second era was the desktop computer, one computer, one person. And the third era, which is the pervasive computing, it's, the it's one phone. person <laughs> and many devices around. Ah, okay. So it's almost like uh, <laughs> smart cities, Internet of Things. Uh, the, it's computation on the edge, computation everywhere around people, helping people. Yes, this yeah. is and my that's uh, increasing uh, by yeah. the day, right? Uh, right? The complexity of the uh, machines uh, and services we interact with. Uh, this is our life for the moment. Connected uh, yeah. societies, yeah. So you work for um, uh, European Parliament? I work for. Uh, you said? Yeah. Uh, which is different from uh, Hewlett Packard, from the private sector. From everything what is different. <laughs> <laughs> what drew you to uh, Brussels? What drew me to Brussels? Uh, 
Okay, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> um, I have to say that um, I, I, I'm Greek, right? So I've worked in my country for the biggest telecom organization. Although I have to say that uh, all the investments my parents have done for me to study, I was feeling that the job I was having, I wasn't, it, it wasn't paying back for the investments. So I, I, I felt that I need to pay back to my parents and to myself. And to be honest, uh, I, I, I found the position and I said, Elizabeth, apply, why not? So I got selected. It was actually it was lovely because I got selected by phone. I was working a night shift in the telecom org, uh, 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. <laughs> I went back home to sleep. My mom doesn't speak English at all. Somebody called her and she thought that is a salesperson, but she heard my name. Mm -hmm. And she brought me the phone while I was sleeping and it was actually for the interview for the European Parliament. This is crazy. It was like six and a half uh, a.m. in the morning. Uh, and uh, apparently so they loved me, so I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I had the pleasure of meeting your mother and your, your father yes. today, actually, that you brought to Geneva to see yeah. the fruits of, your, of their investments, yes. right? Now I understand why you brought them. Thank you, <laughs> to thank, Geneva. You, thank you very to much. To see that uh, yeah. your photo made it to the United yeah. Nations uh, yeah. uh, in Geneva, actually. So they must your have been very proud. Your exhibition is the epitome of my career, I feel so. <laughs> I really feel yeah. uh, your exposition. Your, uh, yes. IT's exposition, I yes. think you are also the contact person of the exposition. Yes. Uh, I have to tell you that um, it's very important to me uh, because I think it's nice doing um, things also most importantly, as you may know, as the chief communications officer, you have to talk about them. An exposition is a perfect way to explain what are we fighting for. Yes. I think so. Uh, you work for uh, Hewlett Packard, yeah. and uh, besides uh, your uh, paid job and you know what you make for a living, yeah. uh, are are you doing anything else for no. women? <laughs> ah, yes, uh, there are two things I love the most. The one is body language. I'm obsessed on reading books for body language. I, I think like. Um, it's sometimes it's it's nice, but sometimes it's freaking me out because you understand things that you've never imagined for. And secondly, uh, as I said, I'm a woman working uh, in IT, fighting for women. And I have to say that recently I'm, I'm becoming very active as a, a women's ambassador for my company, especially for Switzerland. Uh, we are having internal employees group uh, that I really vi uh, fight for, work for. And I have uh, two purposes. I feel that if I am fighting for myself, it's almost that I'm automatically fighting for every woman across mm -hmm. this globe. This is yes. why and the only reason I'm doing yes. it. And apart that, I want to have fun <laughs> with ladies. So uh, it's, um, I think um, it's, 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 it's a lovely environment that uh, n it's nourishing us to expose ourselves to, to be more extroverted. And I think um, I'm not doing it just to be all the women together. I'm doing it to have every woman taking out her true self. Because I think sometimes we are hiding our true selves because, uh, how to say that, barriers of society are helping us to hide ourselves, let's yes. say. And there are societal barriers. Yes, yeah? this is very uh, well Obviously, said. there are biological differences between uh, sure. uh, different kinds of sexes, but uh, it's society that says, okay, you're like this and you're like sure. this. You know, men like, are like mm. this and women are like that. So yeah. uh, uh, tell me a bit about your and our, <laughs> yeah. uh, the people that listen to us and watch us. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, any uh, barriers you may have perceived <laughs> or, or real barriers you have encountered on your way to where you are today. And uh, if there have been, how did you overcome them? Yeah, this is a great question, honestly. I think uh, this question must be asked to every woman <laughs> across this uh, globe. I think we're going to get surprised of what we're going to be listening as a response. On my side, the, the most number one top class question, like a lovely, it was like, oh my girl, you're a woman. I'd like to have a man as technician. And for our both of surprise, it was a woman asking me that. This is uh, <laughs> an even biggest, an even biggest surprise. So not only men creating uh, uh, barriers, sorry. Uh, women create uh, barriers themselves. In between for us, themselves. yeah. Yes. Imagine you have a woman on the phone listening to your voice, understanding. Oh, Monica, you're a lady. May I have uh, your boss uh, talking to me because, or your boss's boss because it's a man, it's not a woman. This is the constant question, especially of the fact that I was a technician. This was a, a constant barrier all the time. And the there is one thing, you move forward. Move to your ladies that you are listening to us right now. Please walk your road through 
solve the issues of the people, you're going to receive uh, hundreds of hundreds of thank yous uh, because we are also a woman and you were not supposed to solve the issue. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> so you talked about the uh, pioneering, right? Uh, what you do for yourself, you're pioneering and paving the way uh, for other women uh, yeah. to follow the lead or, or, or do something similar in their sphere of influence. Yeah. Um, you, are, uh, you have been appointed now uh, to president yeah. of the association of, uh, of the network of women working uh, uh, for yeah. uh, Hewlett Packard yeah. uh, in all of Switzerland. Uh, so you have not started that job yet, no. but what's your agenda? What's, what's your vision of uh, what impact would you like to leave no. once uh, you quit that uh, responsibility again? Great question. The first impact I'd like to have is, first of all, to create a safe space in between us. First of all, uh, sometimes, you know, once I've been asked from my company last year to be an ambassador, uh, I, s s speaking about women's rights on the 8th of March, which is the International Women's Day, actually. And after that, I had a vast amount of ladies coming to me, telling me what they are experiencing. And I asked them, ladies, why are you talking to me? Like, I'm nobody. I just... Uh, and they told me, yeah, but we have to talk to somebody. On the other hand, you know, uh, uh, our company is on a daily basis encouraging us, speaking out. So I am feeling that we need to create a safe space in between us. So uh, ladies in between, we need to be safe speaking in between us first. So then we are uh, able to advocate uh, and um, uh, exercise our rights um, and edu being educated about our rights. Because I'm feeling that many women in this globe, they fought for their rights years ago and now we grew up in an era that things uh, in between women's and uh, men's inclusivity they are going better so we are taking things granted and we're not spending our time to get educated about, about our current rights for the moment so again safe space in between us being educated very well about our rights and have fun yeah <laughs> um, uh, I, I believe nothing in life is granted yeah and any step we may make forward as women uh, can at any moment uh, go backwards again because uh, the environment is changing, leadership is changing, you know. Uh, so um, are there any recommendations you touched upon education? Are any, are you, do you have any recommendations how to uh, make it easier for young people to find their way mm. into what's their passion? Uh, and if you do what you're passionate about, you don't have to work, actually. Yeah? So you said yeah. to me when we prepared yeah. a little bit the conversation that it took you 20 years to discover your 29. talent. 29. 29. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to ask how old you are. Yeah. But it took you 29 it's years. okay. Yeah. So, um, I was born 1991, for your reference. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. So you can make the mass uh, <laughs> out there yeah. listening to yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, are there any recommendations mm. uh, from your experience? What could be done better? What could be done better? Everything can be done better, okay, of course, everywhere. Um, let's state it simply, I, I'd say. Um, I do believe that education is um, uh, putting us through very well preserved, pre guided roads. Although, I'd love, I, I, in, an, in a utopia era, let's say, I'd love to be daily exposed to different professions. So this way, uh, there is no other way to find your inner talent, your true talent, if you are not getting exposed. If I would do it all over again from my childhood, every day I'd go to a different uh, place to work. I would go to a bakery. Maybe I make a good bread. Honestly, I've never tried it. Maybe <laughs> I, I'm, I can be a good uh, baker. So uh, next day I would go to a, to a hair salon to try haircuts. Why not? Maybe I am uh, a very good uh, uh, hairdresser and I don't know about it. So people, everybody, ladies, non-ladies that you are listening to us, expose yourself to everything. I've never been exposed in front of an audience until... I've been uh, appointed to my latest role and thank you for my, my current company for that. It's very important to me. And it took me 29 years to be exposed in front of an audience and uh, people, please do not be afraid. Get exposed in everything. Yeah. It took me some years again to find what I'm good at at the gym, for example. We, you need to get exposed uh, in everywhere. Maybe something you're good, maybe something you're not. It's okay. It's okay to not be good at things because I'm sure we're all born not with one, many more talents that we don't know. Find your talents, guys.
Yeah, and if you don't do it, you cannot uh, find it, you cannot experience no. it. And also, if uh, even if you read a book about it, you may not feel the same emotion. You know, while we're no. sitting here, we're having fun. We get energy out of this, right? I uh, do so. <laughs> you we, do too. We both <laughs> learn something. Yeah. So uh, I would encourage that as well. Uh, do uh, experiment. Uh, and if it's not working, then you go to something else. Yeah. And then one day you will discover what really gives you energy and what corresponds to your passion. But what about you? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm uh, how to say, I'd like to ask you many things, but I know that, uh, okay, you... Well, go ahead. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll go ahead. You yeah. give me the go. Yeah. Okay, uh, you're a woman now having a position of Chief Communications Officer in International Telecommunication Union, am I right? Yes, how you could say did that. you get there? What do you do? <laughs> tell us, tell the ladies, what can they do to reach your, your position? Well, I would say it's exactly what you said. You know, I was trying out different things. So I was, uh, I wanted to be, uh, first, I wanted to be uh, an architect. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I discovered there is a bit too much uh, math. Uh, then I wanted to be the journal, a journalist, you know, okay. because I was best in class uh, in the German uh, uh, classroom. No wonder. And <laughs> uh, but then uh, I loved French, you know, and so I said, I need to go to France to learn oh, wow. French because I did it in school and I could not speak. Oh, yeah. uh, so I went to France, but I couldn't write as a journalist. So, okay. Okay, so I did that and I opted for business. Mm. Yeah, because with business, you can do a lot of things. And then after that, I thought, OK, uh, how can I combine business and, uh, and journalism? OK, let's do B PR. Yeah. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I studied um, communications in the United States. And when I was in being interviewed for a Fulbright scholarship, they said, yeah, why don't you go for PR? You know, not journalism, PR. So OK. I'm, OK, let's do that. Uh, then I came back um, to Berlin after the wall came down. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, uh, the wall was the condom. Now the people in the new federal states of mm. Germany, formerly East Germany, were exposed to HIV and AIDS. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And that's where uh, I was tasked then to do a campaign uh, with young people okay. about HIV AIDS uh, prevention. And I loved that so much. And when my partner at the time said, OK, let's go to Geneva, you know, I thought, OK, what can I do in Geneva? And there was the World Health Organization. And so I walked in. You walked in. At the in. time, you could just walk in. You walked in. in. I walked into the okay. building. Uh, today, you have high security. You know, you can, uh, I felt that today. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a long time ago. All and, right. Uh, and I took the telephone book, and I was checking, OK, where's the PR uh, department? And I walked in. I said, here I am. And he said, uh, I don't have something now, but in a few months, uh, someone is leaving, so you could take that uh, job. And you took it. Yeah. And so I took it. So I was in comms. It was PR, Obviously. if you wish, public mm. information. Mm. I loved it. Um, and uh, from then on, a um, few years later, there was the internet hype. And then I thought, OK, uh, I come from business. Uh, let's um, try a startup. <laughs> and I, <laughs> Another challenge. <laughs> and someone else started a, a, a startup, and mm. we were the first in Switzerland to develop uh, uh, data driven web applications oh. with a software that was doing part of the programming, yeah, okay. uh, software from the United States. So okay. we were amongst the first to offer that to clients. But our real dream was to build a search engine mm -hmm. uh, which is trained by uh, giving feedback to bring better results. Yeah. So right. it was artificial intelligence at the time. Okay. And how would you call it? It was a like. So we had the idea in 1999 mm. to mm. have likes. And that didn't work in Switzerland because all the, the, the prospective clients said, OK, why would I invest in this? You know, it's too much work to train something. Always something yeah. is too much work uh, to invest. So we were always yeah. ahead of time uh. and it didn't work. Uh, mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. you, you like everything on LinkedIn, right? And on other platforms. So it's common. But and that's how you train the This machines. is the way of life for yeah. the moment. Uh, for the moment. Yeah. yeah. So that was in 2000. Yeah. Mm, uh, right. And then I thought, OK, uh, it's too techy for me. OK. <laughs> I want life and okay. people and mm. I went back to WHO after another stop yeah okay. and from there on then I thought okay uh, after uh, having mastered the uh, the communication for the fourth public health emergency of international con concern that was before um, uh, COVID yeah COVID was the fifth yeah uh, public health emergency of international um, uh, concern um, I applied here 
You just and applied. With the, I just applied. All yeah. right. No country behind. I applied yeah. and uh, with the background in some tech and innovation, etc. Yeah. And organizations I too, I suppose. Uh, and yeah. WHO, etc. And that's uh, how I ended up here. But as you, uh, uh, I like uh, the engagement with people best. Yeah. And trying to explain things that uh, may appear complex and are complex. Yeah. Um, and only people make them complicated, yeah. But complex issues to uh, make that accessible for people, so uh, they understand how the United Nations works, how does the uh, ITU work, how is governance uh, uh, made, how negotiations happen, and um, and what are the issues that uh, mm -hmm. we deal with and that uh, really uh, go around the world, like artificial intelligence, right now. To be honest, sorry, long no. story. No, it, it, it actually it's a great story, and I have to attest that I feel that you're not just a believer; you're also a practitioner of it. Yeah. Meaning that uh, when I got um, in contact, when you got in contact with me, that I've been selected for the picture, I couldn't believe that a chief communication officer is exchanging emails with the <laughs> ladies. That I, um, meaning, like, I'm not saying that this is this isn't supposed to be your work, but with the workload hanging behind your back, honestly, I, I thought that uh, wow, this should be like. A great amount of work and now I understand better because you really like the people engagement and I yes. think maybe you are yes. seeking for this part in your yes. work life. Exactly. So Absolutely. how what's your daily life? Uh, I mean, what's your, your day in, uh, in the office? A oh. typical day in the office. Oh, um, yeah. okay. Typical, typical day, of course, there are uh, editorial meetings in the morning where okay. we look a little bit uh, what's the plan for today, what's the plan for the week. Uh, and Monday mornings, we have a larger group with other communicators in ITU that right. do not report to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm corporate comms officers, not oh, chief. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So they yeah. do not report to me. Uh, but then we look at, okay, what's, uh, what, what's the content you wor are working on? What do we have to uh, raise awareness of? So uh, today it was the not uh, a women's uh, job, not uh, not uh, question mark. Uh, exhibit uh, but also we uh, had the opening of uh, the global um, symposium for regulators um, and then uh, we continued this week so every day there is something every week there is a conference we just came out of the ai for good global summit uh, and the world summit on the information mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. a few weeks ago so um, we work on uh, on communication around these uh, conferences statutory conferences and, and public conferences uh, we look at uh, media monitoring what's going on in the world. Yesterday there was a resolution passed by the UN General Assembly um, on, uh, on AI uh, oh, and capacity building. So, okay, right. we have to know that, you know, what's, uh, is there any role I we can play? See. Will we get questions, hmm. you know? Um, social media, of course. So after this is over, uh, we will uh, post some uh, images and interviews we did this yes. morning <laughs> yes. on, on Instagram. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so we draft blogs, so perhaps we can turn this interview into a blog, an uh, ITU news blog. We produce magazines. Uh, I mean, there are so many things. We work on the Visitor Centre Portail des Nations here in Geneva, mm -hmm. which took years since 2018, okay. you know, and there's always a little bit to be done. To be done, to be done. Yeah. Uh, podcast interviews. My secretary general with the Under Secretary General for Global Communications in New York. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's never the same. Yeah, there is mm -hmm. some routine to it, but uh, there's a lot of improvisation and reprioritization throughout the day and throughout the week. Okay, and what's the worst thing as a woman you've heard uh, <laughs> in our field? What's the uh, worst memory? Uh, I have to say, I never, I, I didn't perceive uh, barriers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, because I, I was more always coming not from the tech angle, but from the communication angle. Yeah, mm, uh, I and, see now. Uh, and, and as uh, women, we are supposed to be okay working exactly. for communication. Communication is natural for us, right? Yeah. We, p we are put into the communication, mm. uh, marketing, uh, mm. negotiation, sales uh, bucket. Yeah, so uh, that's how I always presented myself, not mm. as a tech person, mm. and I still would not consider mm. myself a tech person. Although I do take, uh, but I'm a governance person. So mm. I work on uh, guidelines for the responsible use of generative AI for communicators, okay. for instance. Yeah. Okay. So I always try to bridge communication and uh, and governance, or the first social media policy at the mm. World Health Organization. Okay. And, uh, yeah. 
All right. And what's your career aspirations, if we may ask? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You ask me. <laughs> so I'd like to know about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do have. Uh, I have do. I do have aspirations still. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if they are career. Mm. Uh, I definitely would like to do more for climate mm. because I see that as the biggest threat to uh, society, mm -hmm. um, which. Yeah, is more difficult to control, uh, mm. not mitigate, probably more adaptation. Uh, and honestly, I never thought, I always said, you know, the only thing we cannot control is the weather. Yeah, but we have and we cannot control it, but we contributed to what we're facing right now. Also in Switzerland, a very rich country with very good infrastructure where whole containers are carried away and in rivers. Yeah, so. Um, for me, it's the climate, mm. but there's also green digital. Mm -hmm. uh, we do green digital action here at ITU, and that could be another bridge to that's somewhere a, else. That's a great bridge yeah. to everywhere else. Yes, yes. indeed, I do yeah. agree. Yeah. Okay, I think I asked all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, and I think uh, I asked mine too. Uh, we touched upon many things. Yep. Yeah, we did too. So, um, and uh, I hope we can work together, yeah. Uh, if you One do uh, a higher association, not only HP, uh, talk to me again. So I would like to uh, help advocate uh, on I'll that do level. So. Yeah. So thank you very much. So uh, thank you. You're among two who <laughs> came to the exhibit. Yeah, yes. I really appreciate that. Uh, and as you said, uh, it's it's the highlight so far. For me, it is. I'm sure there will be more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so far, it but is. But you though. made uh, it you is. made it to. Uh, I made to it. Come, um, so. I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much uh, and all the best to you, Elizabeth. Thank you.